Good morning. Thank you for attending. My name is Elsie Scott. I'm president and CEO of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And it is my pleasure today to introduce Nielsen and NNPA, who we've invited to join us at our annual legislative conference to release African-American consumers still vital, still growing report. They released their last consumer report during the annual legislative conference, but we are happy that they chose to be here at the convention center to release their report today, because we consider it to be very vital to all of the people who attended our conference here. The timing is so fitting because we will have thousands of African Americans passing through this convention center over the next two days. And this is a very critical year for African Americans as we focus in on a presidential election. It is important that we harness our collective consumer power, particularly in this election year. There are over 43 million African Americans in the United States, and we have a combined buying power of 1.1 trillion. More than three-fourths of us are voting age. That means nearly 28 million blacks should be showing up at the polls on November 6. We are getting a large portion of our political information on television and online. We must ensure that the same level of engagement and interest that is shown in the comfort of our homes, in front of the television and on the internet, is evident on election day at the polls. My thanks to Nielsen, the global company that measures what consumers like us watch and buy. The National Newspaper Publishers Association, also known as the Black Press, for getting the real story out there. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Susan Whiting, Vice Chair of Nielsen. Thank you, Dr. Scott. It's great to be here with everyone today, and thank you for hosting us here this morning. As Dr. Scott referenced, Nielsen measures what consumers watch and what consumers buy. Our clients count on us to provide the most current and inclusive information about consumers in more than 100 countries. Savvy marketers recognize that without consumer support, products and brands can literally disappear by understanding the unique lifestyles, habits, and shopping patterns of African American consumers, companies can enhance their chances of creating better connectivity with this important consumer segment. Last year, Nielsen and the National Newspaper Publishers Association launched a collaborative effort to deliver relevant insights, trends, and traditions about black consumers to companies. And even more uniquely, we delivered the information to consumers themselves by inserting a copy of the report into the NNPA's 200 publications. So what happened? The feedback was astounding. In addition to the NNPA coverage, the report was referenced, or was the focus of, more than 469 articles and received more than 100 million media impressions. Almost 3,700 copies of the whole report were downloaded from Nielsen's website directly, and thousands more were distributed at local national African American events, including the NAACP National Conference, the National Urban League Conference, and Rainbow Push's National Conference, 100 Black Men National Conference, and even Steve Harvey's Hoodie Awards, just to name a few. Over 1,100 corporate individuals participated in a Nielsen webinar for clients about the results. We received more than 200 inquiries from our major clients, the companies that produce products and programs. Seven of our clients invited us in for very deep one-on-one -on -one presentations to discuss how they could use this information to better connect their brands with African American consumers. And the report even won two awards, the 2012 International Association of Business Communicators Bronze Quill Award of Merit 
and the 2012 Publicity Club of Chicago Golden Trumpet Award for Community Service. So we stand here proudly before you this morning to announce that once again, Nielsen and the NNPA are releasing a report which highlights the value of the African American consumer. We've called it the African American Consumers, still vital, still growing in 2012. NNPA's publishers will insert it in their publications, essentially reaching 19 million readers, and Nielsen will continue to share the information with our clients and other companies. NNPA's mission to inform and educate its readers and its steadfast reputation as being the primary and critical resource for influencers, local and national elected officials, and members of the African American community make it an ideal organization with whom Nielsen can collaborate on such an important endeavor. Their quest to tell the African American story is in sync with our emphasis on providing only the best and the most inclusive methodological insights and information to our clients about all consumers. This is a story worthy of being told together and we're proud to have the opportunity to tell it with the NMPA. I do want to extend a very special thanks to Dr. Scott, to the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation and its members for the opportunity to release this year's report right here during the 42nd Annual Legislative Conference. We hope that your members and constituents will find the information contained relevant, helpful, maybe a little surpri surprising, and conducive to having a positive impact within African American community. We hope it's an insightful tool for your theme of inspiring leaders, building generations. Nielsen has three external advisory councils who make sure that we're guided in the right direction, <laughs> measuring multicultural consumers, and who help us create brand awareness in these communities. And today I want to acknowledge members of our external African American Advisory Council who are present and who've helped us tell the African American consumer story. Mr. Vic Bullock, Executive Director of the Hollywood Bureau of the NAACP. Reverend Jacques DeGraff, Associate Pastor of Canaan Baptist Church in Harlem. Pam Fisher, Vice President of Corporate Diversity with News Corporation. Matthew Barnhill, Executive Vice President of Market Research with BET, and Adonis Hoffman, Founder and Chairman of the American Business Leadership Institute. And all of this wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the hardworking and dedicated public affairs team we have at Nielsen. And I want to personally thank you for all the work you do. We have a few present here today. Don Lowry, Don, I know you're there. Wait, wait. Cheryl Pearson McNeil, Courtney Jones, Rebecca Roussel, and Vanessa Figueroa. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Reverend Jacques DeGraff, co-chair of Nielsen's External African American Council. Thank you. Good morning. I am a member of the External African American Advisory Council uh, since its inception. But simply put, uh, there's another title that we could add, that we've come this far by faith. It, it didn't just happen. In addition to being associate pastor at Canaan Baptist Church, I'm a first vice president of the 100 Black Men. That's reflected in the pin that I wear of Open Doors. The New York chapter is the founding chapter of an organization that now has 100,000 men in 116 chapters. The reason I mention that is because when we first approached Nielsen, who have always been the best at what they do, we were concerned that the new technologies would leave our communities behind, that we would be undercounted with this new technology. And sometimes when you get the new and the greatest and the fastest, it can leave out some folks. Now Nielsen could have taken an affront to that. They could have taken an adversarial approach Instead, they invited us to come into the table and sit down. And then they did something extraordinary. They listened. Now, some folks are not used to being listened to. They're used to speaking through a bullhorn. And so when someone says, we want you to come in and sit down and listen to you, 
That's how we can grow. And over time, we learned one thing, that diversity is good for business. I, I need to repeat that uh, because somebody needs to hear that. Diversity is good for business. The reason we lasted all this time is because they saw the results and how it affected their bottom line. And the information that they have gathered is extraordinary. It should be required reading in every African-American household and anyone in America who calls themselves a leader. Because what we watch and what we buy not only reflects habits, but it reflects values. And corporations that better understand the unique lifestyles, habits, and shopping patterns of black consumers can use that information to help grow their market share. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Companies respect Nielsen's analytical insights. And so this partnership has got teeth and roots. And we respect companies that begin doing business differently by developing more inclusive marketing and branding strategies. What does that mean? It means that when companies receive and understand this information about our communities, they change. They do business differently, and it's to our benefit. So Susan Whiting, we want to salute your leadership. Uh, she wasn't introduced with all of her titles. She's vice chair of Nielsen, and she's the chief diversity officer. Hey, did you hear that? She's the chief diversity officer. Her room is not in a closet around the back. She's one of the most respected corporate executives in the world today. And as part of her duties, she's responsible for diversity. She works with the public affairs team. You've heard their names, but they come from our communities. They know us. It's not that we have to introduce ourselves to strangers. Nielsen took the charge seriously. They not only listened, but they acted, and it's to their credit. And so I want to introduce to some and present to others my partner in social justice and economic justice. Oh, he's been on the battlefield a mighty long time. He's not just the executive director from Hollywood. He's a producer and a media star in his own right, my friend, Big Bullock. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, always having to follow a reverend is, uh, you know, a, a task. So um, I really just want to, to stand here. I'll keep my comments brief because this has been a, a long road and it's been a, a really phenomenal partnership and relationship with Nielsen uh, and the best practice I think that they have uh, created as a as a corporation in recognizing the importance of our community, not just with the release of this report and the work that they're now doing with the NNPA to get out information, but also working with the Advisory Council in regards to the, our community and other communities uh, reaching out and making sure that we are represented so that our power and our voices are recognized within their reporting, which impacts and influences all media. And we cannot talk about how powerful the information that uh, Nielsen disseminates is. And in that regard, partnering with the NNPA and their 19 million readers and their 200 publications is extremely significant. Uh, and the information that goes to the 43 million African American consumers. Uh, I want to thank all the members that are here from the Advisory Council. Their work is uh, tireless uh, and continual. Uh, it really has been a, a bit of a historic journey from the beginning where it was kind of adversarial to now where it is kind of authentic and organic throughout the whole uh, Nielsen uh, family and all their companies. Uh, so what can this information and how can the average consumer use this to make a difference in their community? One, seek out the products and services, including websites and online options that address your specific needs. And hopefully this report will give you some guidance in that regard. And also support the retailers in your communities that provide the products and services that you need. And also that support your community. And that's the information and that you will see in regards to the NNPA that speaks to our communities weekly. Um, and each purchasing decision that you make impacts 
your community and our community. So please uh, think about how you use your spending dollars. And I know that's a theme the NNPA uh, and Clovis, you guys address all the time. So we encourage consumers to choose and use your power wisely, and that's single mothers, baby boomers, Generation Y, all consumers. You have dollars and your dollars matter, and that's what this report points out. Thank you all for being here and getting the word out. Oh, it is now my pleasure. <laughs> Again, a, 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 a dapper, a brother who is one of the real leaders in, in all our communities and continually getting the information out. And again, uh, Mr. Clovis Campbell, the chair of the NNPA. Thank you, Vic, and uh, good morning to everyone. I know that uh, you've had a lot of places you could be today, and we're glad to see you here. You know, it's our pleasure to uh, work side by side with Nielsen and particularly Susan as uh, we go into the second consecutive year of working on this study. Uh, we've continued to appreciate the efforts of Nielsen and their partnership with us and them championing the cause of African American consumers throughout the country. Uh, I also want to take a chance to acknowledge Cheryl Pearson McNeil, our Senior Vice President of uh, Public Affairs and Government Relations with Nielsen. Uh, Cheryl and, and our immediate past chair, Danny Bakewell, sat in her office uh, a few years ago and talked about ways that they could partner with Nielsen and what they could do. And the most interesting and most viable thing they came up with was to be able to put together a study like this. And uh, from there, I guess you say the rest is history. And Cheryl, I just want to let you know that we thank you so much for your passion your dedication that you've shown working with our organization uh, throughout this collaboration. Not only do you provide Nielsen's insight to us through uh, your bi-weekly columns, and we appreciate every week looking at them, and you've heard her on Steve Harvey, and you've seen her on different programs, and that uh, article is always there, and people are really picking it up, so we appreciate all your support there. Millions of readers are gonna depend on and continue to depend on NNPA uh, to tell their stories. And this report, this report is a story in itself. I want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to look at it, read it, uh, consume it, and understand that it's about making sure you make choices, the correct choices with the dollars that you spend. Nielsen's latest insights on the spending habits and viewing habits of uh, African Americans demonstrate what a sustainable, an influential economic force that African Americans are. You know, Danny Bakewell always talked about the power, the trust, and the influence of the black press, but even more so the power and the trust and the influence of the dollars that black people spend. So when you talk about what happens, what you're doing, and why you do it, it's very important that you continue to read this study. I want to make sure that I also recognize some of our member publishers and some of our board members here, and they're in the front row. And if you members, if you just stand, John Smith, Karen Carter Richards, Yvonne Coleman Bach, Charles Cherry, Molly Belt, Mike House, Tom Watkins, and if I'm missing somebody, I do apologize, Mary Alice Thatch. She's working great a job on our Wilmington 10 project and Dorothy Lavelle. We are happy to be a part of this program. We're excited about the process. Even more so, uh, we're excited about the fact that everybody has jumped on board, folks like the NAACP, Reverend Jackson with Push Excel, and many others. So I want to thank you for being here. We appreciate your time. And I want to take this opportunity to introduce to you someone that I'm excited about because we just hired him on as our newest team member at NNPA. He's been doing an excellent job, and he's starting to do even more things with us. So uh, I want to introduce Mr. Bill Tompkins, our new president and CEO at NNPA. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. It's a delight to be here. Prior to being president at the NNPA, 
I was a chief marketing officer at two Fortune 500 corporations. So it was very easy for me to come on board and work with our own publishers to talk about real mainstream America, which is the black community. And I'm so excited that we're doing this because this is the type of stuff that really tells us we are a powerhouse in this industry and should not be ignored. Unfortunately, a lot of marketers underestimate the opportunities in the black community. Blacks want more products that are important for them and relevant to their particular needs. They're frustrated. How many people do you see in television shows, in ads, in messaging, in point of purchase communications? There's a missed opportunity. And companies that don't advertise in the black media risk having African Americans perceiving them as being dismissive of issues that are important to them. And the numbers really tell the story. We spend a lot of money, we have a lot of preferences, we watch a lot of, more television than any other group. 54% of us and more own smartphones, and some of us own many smartphones. We buy more products, especially in the health and beauty areas, than the mainstream consumer. And brands represent 82% of the purchases in our households. We are very brand loyal, and that's an opportunity, but for those who don't have brands, it's an opportunity to come and sell to our community. We're very active, and most important, we're engaged. But there's a story that most people don't understand. In magazines, television, radio, over $2.1 billion was spent in 2011. Well, that's great, but guess what? Over $150 billion has been spent in the general media. We're getting less than 2% of the advertising dollars spent in this country, and that's not acceptable. Because we are engaged, we're buying, and yet the dollars are not coming to us. And when we talk about the power of our publications and how engaged we are with them, there's an absolute missed opportunity. General media does not cover us as well as we cover ourselves. Now when you take a look at this report, and we're happy that it's coming out today, a couple of things to remember. 91% of African American consumers believe that black media is more relevant to them. 81% believe that products advertised in black media are more relevant to them. 78% would be more like to, would like to see more black models, more actors, and more than 50%, 50% would purchase the product if the advertising portrayed blacks in a positive environment. So marketers, there's an opportunity out here. The black community is saying you need to pay attention to us because we are willing to buy when we see you paying attention to us. So the opportunities are unlimited. Let's get more of that $150 billion. We only need a couple billion more. We are glad to support this. We are glad to support this effort, and we're glad that we have a great partnership with Nielsen. Now, there are two people we'd like to introduce before we take questions. Uh, you've heard them mention. I'm going to ask them to stand up and make a couple of remarks. Uh, two distinguished individuals. Uh, we'll start with Ben Jealous, president of the NAACP, and the person whom I replace, who started at NNPA. Ben? Yeah, and the uh, y youngest person to lead the NACP, too. Look, it is a real honor to be here with you. I'm very glad to see the talent that is running the day-to-day -day operations for the black press these days. You're exactly what we need. And I say we because when you start out at a black newspaper, as I did in Jackson, Mississippi, and you get the ink in your veins, Molly Belt, the ink never leaves your veins. We have... $1.1 trillion in buying power in our community. And our community is a big contributor to the bottom lines of many corporations. The opportunity here for corporations is to advertise with those media who we know are talking to us. 
When you buy an ad in a black newspaper, our community knows you want to do business with our community. When you buy an ad in a black newspaper, we know you are indeed part of our community. And that means a lot. In this recession, I want to be kind of blunt here. In this recession, too many corporations have cut black media as a way of keeping budget for mainstream media. In, do, in doing so, they've hurt their relationship with our communities, and they've hurt our communities. Because the reality is that these newspapers are vital to ensuring the most basic form of justice in our communities. You don't get to know about a police brutality case. We don't get to get somebody out of prison too often unless the story is first written about in our paper for weeks before it's picked up in the mainstream press. We can't hold people accountable. And we can't get a fora. In this year when there are zero people of color facilitating presidential debates, our preachers, our teachers, our community leaders, where are they going to find the issues of vital importance to our communities discussed? It's going to be in our newspapers and on our radio shows and on BET and TV One most often. And so I hope that our friends and corporations across the country will take to heart the buying power of our community. We'll question each other as to why only 2% of the advertising budgets are spent with black media. And we'll question the impact that they're having, not just on their own bottom line, but on our country as a whole, by making some of the types of decisions that have been made in the past few years. The NNPA has been the voice of our community for a century. And if we're going to move forward in this next century as a nation, not just as a people, but as a nation, the way that we move forward in the last, we need for our corporations to take seriously their commitment to advertising in black newspapers. And with that, I'm glad to say that I will be followed by Reverend Jesse Jackson because I did not want to have to follow him. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Thank you. We have a lot of press here, so uh, just a couple of points of clarification to make sure we're clear about this. That in terms of the media spend in 2011, $120 billion, and our projection, which is a projection for buying power going to 2015, is $1.1 trillion. Now, let me introduce a person who needs no introduction, Reverend Jesse Jackson. Good morning. There are, in my judgment, two dimensions to the story today. One is uh, the black media is the window to the black world. Often stories that matter to us first, quote unquote, go mainstream on the larger audience, but they must matter to us first. We heard about Emmett Till through the Chicago Defender and the Memphis Defender and Jet Magazine first and became real hot on as the wonder to the world. We knew about Jackie Robinson through Wendell Smith and Bomb Lavelle first. Uh, John Sinsack, the black media has been our wonder to the world. Uh, I just came back from a mission in the Gambia, West Africa, where the president uh, and their judicial process determined that 47 people were to be executed. And Thursday night, two weeks ago, nine of them were in the middle of the night executed. Uh, because I had met President Jimmy over a period of time, called him and asked to meet with him. His foreign minister returned the call. A delegation of us went to the Gambia, West Africa, uh, on last Sunday and met with him on Monday. 
and he agreed, A, to decline a moratorium on the killing of the 38. They will not be executed. We're still trying to gain their freedom. But there were two American Gambians whose freedom we did negotiate, and they're here today. As a matter of fact, come here. Dr. Amadil, who was a Knoxville, Knoxville College graduate, University of Tennessee professor, was in jail for life for wearing a, a T-shirt, speaking of demonstrations. Uh, and Thomas Hill was in jail for 20 years and, uh, and served six and a half years in jail in the Gambia. And we were able to negotiate their freedom just this past, uh, well, Tuesday, as a matter of fact. Uh, you would not have recognized them yesterday because they had on their shower shoes. Uh, the plane left at 10 o'clock at night. They would only let them out at 8 o'clock. They told them to go back to the uh, sale to get their shoes and their remaining items. They did not go back. They left running in their shower shoes. They, they never came back. And in the case of uh, Brother Thomas Hill, his wife and two children who were in the Gambia, they were able to catch the plane with us and to come back. And so we thank God for their presence today. Uh, and when we did the Tom Joyner show uh, yesterday with Roland Martin and Roland said, why hasn't this been in the, the mainstream media? Roland said, well, that's how they cover us. That's, why, that's what this is all about. That's how they, so if we don't tell the story, the story will not be told. George Kerr remembers we went to um, uh, get Lieutenant Robert Goodman out of Syria, and that was a tough negotiation. Reagan said, you shouldn't go because you don't know what you're doing. You may mess up, but if you get him, bring him back to the White House. And we did. And we were prepared for a major press argument about how we maneuvered with Assad to get him back and the arguments that we made. And they had one question, who paid the hotel bill? It was such a radical disregard for what happened, the ingenuity involved, the organization involved. And yet here's another case of when, when how African-American, African news is not covered, and by extension, African-American news. And one of the weaker dimensions, George, as we begin to think more globally, uh, Cheryl, is that um, we could not make a case to, for him to not execute the people because they saw us execute Troy Davis. This weekend, this weekend, a year ago, Troy Davis was killed. So he stopped killing 38, and the governor of Georgia wouldn't stop killing one. Uh, one of Gene Allen in Oklahoma on the killing which are bragging pieces for Perry in Texas. So our own capital punishment program here weakens our ability to negotiate in the world. We can't tell them not to lock up innocent people politically. We've got people in jail 25 or 30 years, in fact, who are political prisoners. And so I first want to thank you for being our window to the world. Give these men a big hand, please. Some of you, George, may want to interview them because Jock, their, their story is worth telling. The second piece I want to say briefly about the research part of this, I want to thank Susan Whiting. Susan, will you stand again? Give her a hand, please, Susan. But uh, our liaison person, our point person, because this, this was born in struggle, a fight to protect the integrity of, uh, of Nielsen, and the person who led the fight to salvage, Nixon, to salvage this company from being wiped out in many ways with Cheryl Pearson. Cheryl, may please stand. Give Cheryl a hand, please. <laughs> I want to say this to you, George. The issue is not, because every time we get here, we keep pushing the envelope. The issue is not how much we spend, um, but how much we save and how much we invest and what returns are there on our investment? If we, if we spend all this money but don't, and spend more than we save, we should be embarrassed. If we spend all this money and don't invest, that's not a bragging piece. That's kind of embarrassing. 
But the bigger question is not how much we spend with these companies, but how much do they spend back with us? What is the trade? What is, I want to do some research next year on the trade ratio. How many soft drink franchises do we own there for? Since we drink so much of it, how many of them do we own? How many, how many car distributorships do we own? How many dealerships do we, do we own? How much property are we able to develop? I went to a meeting and I closed last week on some of our Rainbow Push research in the Department of the State of Illinois and um, $500 million they, in IT last year, zero to blacks. And so I would say that this is a great morning. I think the kinship between NNPA uh, and, and Nielsen is a great step in the right direction. But we must take this issue from consuming to saving and mutually beneficial trade. Thank you very much. Thank you, and now we're gonna take questions. I'm gonna ask Cheryl and Susan and Clovis to come up, and we're gonna open it up to questions. We'll open um, the floor for any questions if you guys have any. Yes, hi. I'm, I'm Tony Brooks. I'm here from the United Teachers of Day first in my capacity as a teacher. I'm a freelance photographer and writer for the Miami Times newspaper, the black newspaper in right. Miami. Right. And I think what you're doing is extremely important, especially with the crisis, monetary crisis situation that's going on right now. I won't say anything political, anything, any, even though I'm here in Washington, but when people talk about 47% and numbers such as that, I think that it's even more important uh, to continue the mission of what you're doing. My question is, is how we continue in, in a new age of technology where we're going more online to continue to, to keep print alive? Well, we're doing a lot of things. Of our 200 member publications, we are expanding into the digital world like there's no tomorrow, but we're not giving up on print. We've got 85 websites that are up, started at 15 just over a year ago, going to over 100 by the end of the year, and we'll be up to that 200 figure before the end of next year. But advertising is an important part of our base, and we are going after that money like there's no tomorrow, and it's not just for digital technology or the digital message. It is about print, because print really does work. Go back to that engagement factor. You'll see other research studies that demonstrate that the power of the printed message is just as strong, if not stronger, than messages across other medium. So that's why we're here, to continue to sell advertising, to create that base, to allow our journalists to get out there and do the job they need to do. Next question, George. I think your question was why do corporations miss the opportunity? Some of it just may be they may not know, and I think that's one of the important uh, factors of the publication is when we have had our clients who have engaged with the report, um, a lot of them just didn't know the value. Because when you talk about African American consumers in percentage points, or just in percentages, and you say 13.7% of the population, if off the top of your head you don't know that there are 300 and, and plus million people, you don't know what 13% of what is. And so that's why we take the time to say 43 million African American consumers. It's very important. And that's why we take the time in the report to point out that 43 million people who are black here in the United States, that's bigger than some countries. 
It's bigger than Canada, Australia, you know, and so just as you would not ignore an entire country, we think it's important for the corporate world to understand 43 million people. We're not a homogeneous group. We think differently. Our ages are different. The different ages indicate that we have different spending and purchasing habits, and those need to be tapped into as well. And so that's why the report is so important, so that the corporations actually have the information at their fingertips. Any other questions? Next question. Yes, sir. Um, we did not do it by gender in the report. We did do it by generational um, category, so you'll be able to see that in there, what the breakout is. Um, it's, not, it's not, Mike, do you by any chance know what the breakout is by gender? Just um, male, female. About, yeah, about half. We can follow up with you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. How do you invest? So the 43 million is the number of con consumers, African-American consumers in the United States. There are 43 million. And in terms of investing, um, I'm going to turn that over to someone who may be able to talk about an investment perspective because we actually, I don't do investments, so I don't feel comfortable answering that question. Okay. Sorry. Investments. So, um, So just in terms of understanding the decisions that you're making before you purchase any products, before you use a service, understanding the company that you're purchasing those products with or spending the money with or using their services, I think it's a great way to make sure that we're investing back into our communities by using companies that are supportive of us. You know, and, and to that point, if you look around the room today and at the conference all week, you'll see sponsors here. Those are the people that support you and the organizations that you care about. And that's what we've been trying to put across is that we want you to become conscious consumers and understand that when you spend your money, it means that you're giving back from people who've given to your community. So be wise, we have some of the greatest partners at NNPA this year with General Motors, with Toyota, uh, with Ford, uh, Wells Fargo, and others. So we look forward to making sure that we can get as much information about those organizations as we can. So if you can look around the room, you see McDonald's, you see these signs, go and get one of those cars, go eat one of those hamburgers, do whatever you can to support those organizations that support you. Well, I think the biggest key is that once we have resources, we can be more effective at communicating our message. That will give us an opportunity to, to do more things in our community, to give back via scholarships, via programs, and give more meat to our publications. So the more resources that we get in, the more opportunity we have to give back to the newspapers and to our communities that we serve. Well? We would love to have that would give us more re there's so much news that black folks aren't covered, and we want to make sure that as we continue to put our resources back into our publications, our communities are the ones that are the biggest recipients of those resources. Uh, one more question? Yes. The short answer to that would be yes. Um, we do take um, an opportunity within the report to talk about the 10 uh, top 
designated market areas, which are Nielsen's um, measurement areas, and the highest concentration of higher income and African American populations within those, which there were a couple of surprise, I think, markets in there when you take a look at that. So we do break that out. We also talk about some of the regional nuances um, that may happen between the population cultures, uh, where sub-Saharan Africans may be more prevalent in certain communities than um, West Indians, for example, and the importance of marketers understanding that. But yes, we can get a further breakout of that. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Read the report and use it.